Okay, so we have climate change, energy transition, and uh, if you look in the Netherlands, what is the impact of the uh, climate change that we are uh, experiencing? The summers are getting warmer, so we need more barbecuing and more beer, right? For a lot of us, that is maybe the biggest impact of climate change. It's not too bad. But we also see weather events that we've never seen before. Weather events that, I'll take the city of Valkenburg, I know we have some people from Limburg here today. You take the city of Valkenburg, and two years ago, I think, they had huge flooding, never seen before. So, climate change is here, but what does, is the really impact? My name is Rob, and I would like you to welcome to the launch of our newest product. I think the energy transition is underway. There's no more stopping it now. And there's a big debate, and you can hear it sometimes, between battery electric and hydrogen. What is it going to be, battery electric, hydrogen? But I think the real reality is we don't have enough green electrons. We don't have enough green molecules. We need everything we can get to make the energy transition happen. And the fight is not between battery and hydrogen. That's not the fight. The fight is battery and hydrogen against fossil fuel. That is the real fight. So stop arguing this way, start arguing that way. So, time is of the essence. I'm an old guy, I'll probably make it. But the next-gen future is there, the students driving the zero-emission vehicles, and they deserve a real planet. Europe has huge ambitions in CO2 uh, emissions, and part of those reduction is based on green hydrogen, on these huge, huge electrolyzer projects, 200 megawatt-plus electrolyzing being built by Shell on the Mars flock, the announcement of 350 megawatts in Groningen seaports, and 250 megawatts here, and this and there. But many of these projects, if not most of them, are postponing the FID, the final investment decision, is postponed, postponed, postponed. We also see that these big uh, electrolyzers are very difficult to build. The electrolyzer companies are, have difficulties to scale up these huge plants. So the reality is that these investments will take longer than we expect, and the gigawatts of green hydrogen associated with those electrolyzers will be waiting longer. But we have no time to waste, so we need solutions now. And that is what I think is going to happen, from generation to delivery. So if you look at the electrolyzer companies today, they can build smaller units. And it seems to me that a 5 megawatt electrolyzer module is becoming sort of a building block for this business. Building block for building energy hubs from 5 to 10 to 20 to 30 megawatts, maybe. This is how you get started. And it's being produced locally. Locally with a, a, a solar uh, park, for instance, here in the Netherlands, here close by. In New Buinen, we have a 115 megawatt solar park, but they only have a 70 megawatt connection to the grid. So you're wasting energy. So, what do you do with that regionally produced hydrogen? Well, you can do different things with it. You can use it for providing hydrogen to, let's say, an industrial bakery that changes from natural gas to hydrogen. You can use the heat from the electrolyzer for heating domestic or residential or commercial buildings. You can also bring the hydrogen to a hydrogen refueling station. 
or you can use it as a chemical building block. But you have it locally. But maybe, maybe the hydrogen station is not right next to the electrolyzer, and the industrial customer is maybe not next to the electrolyzer. There is some distance, maybe 50 to 100 kilometers away. It's a regional thing. But what is the missing link? <laughs> Hi, I'm Julia. From our market research, we have identified that in the foreseeable future, there is only one way that the clean hydrogen can be transported. Now, you've driven a hydrogen car, you've seen a hydrogen truck, and this is what we are going to be feeling next. A hydrogen tube trailer. <laughs> Welcome to the product launch of our TTFS. Oh, oh. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to our new product launch of the TTFS, the tube trailer filling station. With this new product, we fill in the missing link. We have seen that in the market there is a high demand in the dynamic usage of the system. That is why, together with Van Halter technology, we have developed a unique high-capacity compression system, which allows for the unlimited amount of start-stops, has an adjustable capacity and a very high lifetime. Our system is scalable. We've seen that the, the electrolyzers achieve their capacity by stacking multiple electrolyzers of a set capacity, of, for example, 5 megawatt, to be able to achieve a uh, power output that is required. That is why we have developed our tube trailer filling station with the scalability of electrolyzers, catering from 5 to 30 megawatt capacity electrolyzer systems. We offer to our clients up to 14 filling bays. We understand that this is a new product in the new market, which, can be hard, which means that there are no standard pressures for the tube trailers, which means it can be hard for our customers to choose just one filling pressure for their tube trailers filling station. For this reason, we offer up to four various pressure levels to safely fill the tube trailers from 200 to 500 bar. Well, what is the business case? How can you make a business case? We heard a lot of discussions about that already. And I think it brings a couple of things uh, to the table. The first one is that if you s operate a small local hub, an energy hub, let's call it, then you might see that it might be connected to a solar park and you're sun following. That means during the night it's producing zilch, right? So the compressor needs to shut down at that point in time, or the wind is lying down. Or you could have a situation that electricity prices are very high, then you're better off switching off your electrolyzer or bringing it to a low state. But when the, price, the, the electricity is low, you want to run it. Or when you're on a business park in the weekend, there's no activity. You want to not only store it in a battery, but you want to produce hydrogen at a, at a cheap rate so you can use it later on. So flexibility is key for these local energy hubs, and that's why you need a compression system that can be started and stopped every time you want it. And that's how we designed it. The second thing that we looked at is maintenance. Maintenance, OPEX is a big part in the hydrogen compression cycle, and we focus together with Van Halter developing the right seals so we have very long uh, intervals between maintenance. And that reduces the OPEX. And by doing that, you have less downtime because every time you do maintenance, you have downtime. And by the way, we will send you a bill as well when we do maintenance. So you want to increase the period of maintenance intervals so we can reduce the total cost of ownership for you. And thirdly, but not lastly, it's a modular system. We know we need to grow these systems step by step. So maybe you start with a 5 megawatt module, but you have the intention to grow to 30 megawatts. Well, do you want to install a 30 megawatt equivalent compressor at that point in time, or do you want to wait with your CapEx uh, investment? You probably want to wait. 
So you want to have a 5 megawatts and then grow to 10 to 20 to 30. We have a modular approach. And you can also bring uh, more modules as you go. Also, when you see that I need to increase the pressure level in my system, you can add compressor stages at a later point. So this modular uh, approach, high, uh, long intervals, and the ability to flexibly react to the system makes the business case great. Now, what you can see here is a beautiful 3D render of the product, right? And we are in the energy transition. And in the energy transition, you see a lot of new companies popping up. And they're all showing you fantastic 3D computer-generated graphics of fantastic solutions and products that they think they will one day build and maybe will work. If you go to these trade shows, all those new companies popping up, showing these 3D graphics, and they all say it's the, the, the next best thing to slice bread, but you still have to wait until it works. We are engineers at heart. That's our DNA. And engineers, they want to first prove for themselves, is this going to work? So instead of sending, uh, presenting 3D renders to you, we'd rather present you pictures of things we've done. And you can see that when the, we show you pictures of the stations we've built. And with Van Halteren together, uh, we, we built a prototype, and this prototype of the compressor has been running since April 2022. So for over two years, we've been running this Big Johnny, that's the compressor, uh, and that's the heart of the system, it's a huge compressor. And it's been running for two years, and we want to be sure that if we introduce it, it's going to work for you. So, there you have it, the compressor that works. Tube trailer filling station has a high TRL. As mentioned by Rob, we have been running the test on the system since April 2022, without any issues, and the product is ready to be installed in the field. The reliability is another aspect that contributes into our customers' TCO. Our existing station's uptime is 96%, and from the tube trailer filling station, this can be expected to be even higher. All right, so with this product, we are connecting the missing link that we uh, introduced to you earlier on. And with our 30 plus years of high pressure technology experience and the hydrogen knowledge that we built over the last eight years, we want to make your business case successful. But, and we've said this many times, we all need to work together. Suppliers, service partners, uh, customers, but also the headhunters, there are some headhunters here that work for us, recruiters they call themselves, I think. Uh, we all know, need those people to get them into the hydrogen business with the right qualifications. The, the province is here, the gemeente is here, the municipality of Assen. We all need to work together to make this happen to make this network in Europe of smaller hydrogen uh, energy hubs that will deliver the transition. All right. So, at Resato, we want to spur the energy transition by driving zero emission mobility. That's how we started today. We're a high-tech company with world-class hydrogen refueling uh, solutions. And that's how we accelerate from 100 to zero. Our engineering DNA has brought amazing results. Hydrogen refueling stations with unparalleled reliability and performance. We aim for the highest efficiency and uptime and most compatible total cost of ownership. Performance, however, goes beyond just the technology. Our ambition is to build and strengthen an ecosystem together with you, so we deliver the best hydrogen refueling uh, solutions for tube trailers, for cars, for trucks, for buses, for trains, and maybe even boats in the future. That's what we want to do. And that's how we build a, a future for these guys that are racing there here tomorrow. We are engineers at heart, operating with the ambition and mindset of a global entrepreneurial company. Our drive to excel is unchanged. Our perspective has widened and matured. We have a passion for performance, and we are the reliable first. Thank you so much for your attention. <laughs>